All right, everybody, on today's video, I went Ubering in St. Petersburg, Florida. And let me tell you, it was a huge disappointment. Let's go over how the day went to understand exactly why I will never do St. Petersburg again while doing Uber. The first pickup I had was in this neighborhood right here, close to downtown, and it was a short ride not that far away. A short ride that included getting on a highway, driving to some residential neighborhoods, and ending up in a busy area. So kind of a very complex drive that only paid $5 and the person did not tip. Usually when you're picking up somebody from a residential neighborhood and taking them to what appears to be their place of work, people who work and make minimal salaries usually are not going to give you a tip because they just can't afford it. And I understand these people need a ride, but I'm not doing this as charity work. I'm doing this to make a living as well. And I can't make a living transporting people around who don't even have money for tip. So here we are. This ride is already established with the customer on board. We are heading to a commercial area. I thought this was a railroad crossing. Turns out that it's actually a pedestrian crossing, but there's nobody crossing. This ride actually included going on the interstate where there was some type of traffic congestion. And let's not forget that there's a toll road going into St. Petersburg, which is $1.75. And there's another toll road getting out of St. Petersburg, which is $1.12. Which means that just before you get started, you're already paying to enter the city of St. Petersburg because there's causeways and there are toll roads. So that doesn't really make going to St. Petersburg any much better. But the fact that we ended up in this city trying to get this money and really I was hoping for people leaving restaurants, bars. I was hoping, okay, this first one's gonna take me to downtown, right? So downtown means hotels, there's the waterfront. Somebody will certainly be doing something that will considerably give me tips. But it turns out that no, there are very few tourists in St. Petersburg right now. And just about everybody we dealt with was commuting to work, which means that they weren't tipping at all. Red car here is about to get into a hockey match with the car in front of it, even though it was just a split second thing. It really wasn't worth it. And the gray car in front of us is going to fall asleep. So it seems like there was a lot of very distracted drivers. On top of that, St. Petersburg is a very compact city that's grown upwards but the roads haven't got any water, which means that the curbs are really tight and we're in a large vehicle, which means that driving around this city, you have to be extraordinarily careful because it really is a compact city with very few places to hide. You can see here the light's green, but neither one of these people are paying attention. Finally, they go and they turn their turn signal and we go this way here. Now, I'm thinking we're in a big city, downtown, restaurants, bars. This should be a pretty good run, right? I mean, it can't be worse than Bradenton, Florida, right? All right, so we drop off the first customer of the day in a busy area. And again, drivers that are completely distracted and not moving for some reason. Now I'm thinking I'm immediately going to get another hit because after all, we are in the downtown of a city. So in no time, I should be getting a rider. So I'm driving around this parking lot thinking, sure, I'm going to get a hit right off the bat. Well, it's not happening. So I'm scratching my head wondering, huh, we're in the downtown of a city. Why aren't we getting any hits? Notice that there's a homeless person right there between the white and the black car. They're just kind of doing their homeless thing right there between the buildings. Kind of sketchy for homeless people to be hanging out in an area this busy in a downtown. I think that's kind of interesting. But here we are. In the heart of a big city, I'm thinking it's going to be an exciting day with tourists and people having a great time. But I take a parking spot because I'm thinking, okay, why am I not getting any hits here? We're in a big, busy city. Look at the big buildings, right? We should be having customers here any minute. After waiting for a while, I actually took a drive that was pretty far away. Now, usually when you're in a downtown of a city, you would think you should just be picking one person off and then boom, right there's the next person. But it turns out that Ubering in St. Petersburg really sucks. In fact, I actually took a ride that paid $10 for about a 20-minute drive. And it took a while to get to that destination. In other words, it really wasn't worth it. I mean, I drove all the way to St. Petersburg. You would think this place would be packing, but it wasn't. So this is the disappointing realization that I'm not going to be dealing with tourists 
I'm going to be dealing with people who are commuting to very bad paying jobs, which means that it's not going to be a fun day like I imagined of big city vibes. It's going to be mostly, well, stuck on highways. So I'm not really looking forward to the realization that I'm coming to here. Now this is around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so I would expect there to be peak rush hour. Unfortunately, on the other side of the water in Tampa, a downtown shooting was taking place where four people got hit, many of them innocent bystanders, over what according to the police is saying is just nothing more than a dispute that got out of hand outside of a very nice restaurant right outside of downtown. In other words, somebody like myself could have easily been there. And this isn't the first incident in Tampa. Recently, there was another incident in Ybor City of the same magnitude, except for that happened very late at night. For you to be having shootouts in downtown at 4 in the afternoon, man, that's pretty bad. In a restaurant with people packed everywhere, there are so many people that bystanders got hit. So, violence is starting to get out of hand in the state of Florida. Now, St. Petersburg is the safest large city in Florida, but there's somewhat of a problem in St. Petersburg, and that is... That Pinellas County has a high overdose rate and there's a lot of homelessness and panhandling in the area. So we're going to go ahead and pick up our second customer for the day. This ride is only going to pay us $10 and again, they didn't tip us. Now St. Petersburg has one of the largest downtowns in Florida. You would think that just a large and spread out downtown would lend itself perfectly for what we do, which is Uber riding. But I would have to say that nobody that I picked up today was actually like doing something and using an Uber. Just about everybody was, well, commuting to work. And that's never fun. If you pay attention on the patio of this CVS are homeless people and they're actually panhandling to passing cars. So you can see there's a bunch of people there panhandling. Looks like they're homeless. And it seems like a great place to panhandle because you're on a sidewalk and cars are stopping so you don't even have to walk for that one so yeah it definitely seems like there's a lot of panhandling and people just vagrantly hanging around in st petersburg which is sad because a city that has the fame that st petersburg has of a city that's changing and blah 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 all right so we're gonna go back in this little area here to pick up our second person for the day in st pete now with the privacy policy we don't want to be too specific about where we're picking up people and dropping them off we want to give the customer, the passenger, the absolute best privacy. So I'm just giving you guys a general idea of what area to what area we're picking people up. We're not going to get into details about specific places or too much details about our passengers. But I always like to relate what my day was like and what the people were like. I can say that in St. Pete, just about everybody that I picked up was somebody commuting to work. It didn't seem like there was any tourist. There was only one person who was a tourist. And it seemed like the tourist wasn't doing something touristy. They were making an essential run, which, again, is not fun. But the tourist was definitely the most fun person of the day, as you would expect. Back on the interstate highways again. Look at this building. It's all graffiti out. Looks like something out of Oakland, California. But we're on the highway, and we're on the highway for a while. In fact, this was an 11-mile ride. 11 miles for $10 means that we got paid less than a dollar a mile that is absolutely pathetic and the person did not tip and i took this ride out of pure necessity because as you guys know we have to make this work somehow so i had to take whatever came about because i spent quite a significant amount of time trying to get passengers in downtown there was nothing so here we are we're getting paid less than a dollar a mile and we're in bumper to bumper traffic on a highway with a person who is commuting to work or from work and has no intentions of talking or communicating. They're just sitting there blankly staring ahead. It's not anything special for them. It's just another day commuting. And that means that it makes for an awkward almost 20 minute ride. Completely unbearable. It's sad to say this. But somewhat of a miserable existence taking place here in St. Petersburg, Florida. Definitely nothing exciting going on. At this point, I'm starting to have some regrets about even leaving the house today. 
because it's starting to look like I'm not even going to make my gas money since I couldn't get a passenger to go across the Skyway Bridge and there's a toll on the Skyway Bridge, meaning that overall we're right now at a deficit for the day. The only thing that could save me would be generous tips and that usually comes from tourists, not from people commuting back and forth from work. So we're pretty much sitting here wondering like, yep, one of those days where it would have been better to stay home. This drive literally took me from one end of St. Petersburg to the other and almost to the edge of Clearwater. So yeah, 11 miles through a large urban core is definitely never a fun ride and a lot of it was under construction. Right here, you're getting real close to that wall. I hate these things. Does anybody hate these things? You're in the inside lane and there's like a wall like a foot away from you. And if you're in a big vehicle, this is always intimidating because it feels like if you don't have the right angle, you're going to hit the wall. Yeah, definitely not fun. Another thing about St. Petersburg is if you miss your exit, because there's a lot of these overpasses, you can end up, you know, 10, 15 minutes added to your trip if you're not paying attention very carefully. Look at how grimy this little area right here looks. A testament to how long this ride was, the GoPro died, and we stopped watching footage for a while. But I picked up a tourist, and this tourist actually gave me a tip. It was a $3 tip, and it was the only tip I got in St. Pete. That is very pathetic, and it had to be the person from out of town because none of the locals could actually afford to give me a dollar tip. We dropped him off at a busy shopping plaza, and at this point, I'm kind of hungry, tired, and I'm looking for something to eat. So I'm thinking, you know what? Let me see if I can find something to eat in this area. And we're going to head into an area known as Pervert Park, which is the most dangerous part of St. Petersburg, at least to Uber. Now, as the name would suggest, it's an area that's known for having one of the highest concentrations of registered offenders anywhere in the state of Florida. So that is the area we're going to head to. And we're just going to sit around and try to catch passengers in this somewhat not fun area of St. Petersburg. Not only was the tourist the only person who talked to me like a normal conversation throughout the whole day, but he was the only person that tipped. Meaning that that ride right there was the only enlightenment I had throughout the whole day as everybody else that I dealt with was really not the most talkative person you would want to have. Every once in a while, it's nice to have a talkative person, and it's nice to have somebody that tips. So again, we're heading now into an area that has one of the largest concentration of registered offenders anywhere in the state of Florida. And we're going to try to catch a ride on somebody who needs a ride in that little area. All right, so I'm online looking for rides in this area here known as the Pervert Park. This area, like I said, is somewhat unattractive, very dangerous area. And the people in this area, a lot of them are registered offenders. So it's a very dangerous neighborhood, lots of vagrant people. So I got my uh, Uber app on and I'm hoping I can give somebody a ride in this neighborhood, take them to the store, whatever they need done. But uh, nothing really happens yet. I'm still waiting for this Uber app to kind of give me some leads. Looks like a dead end road here. Now, this is absolutely one of the most dangerous places in Florida. You can tell a few things. For one, you're always being followed by somebody once you enter this neighborhood. You're always being watched. A lot of these guys did a lot of time in prison, so just about everybody that lives back here has a very extensive criminal record and it's institutionalized. And well, a lot of these people have a lot of criminal history, a lot of problems. And uh, we're driving through here and a car does start to follow us around immediately. These people are somewhat paranoid and a lot of YouTubers have been coming back in here and trying to exploit them. Uh, a lot of criminals come after them as well. So you can see the amount of signs everywhere. It's like every 10 feet, there's a sign for something. Do not trespass, no parking. So that right there, whenever you enter a neighborhood and you see that many signs, every 10 feet, there's a sign telling you something. That should just give you an indication of how problematic this neighborhood is, where every single house has a sign or every 10 feet, there's a some type of sign 
All that is indicative of an area that is extraordinarily problematic. So at this point, somebody has spotted us and they are following us in a vehicle. Now, it all happened off camera. You can't really tell, but we're definitely being followed. These guys are going to be inside the houses looking out the windows or they're going to have somebody from a vantage point. If you enter this little area, you're being watched. It could be by law enforcement. It could be by the people that live here. They might have to set up some type of community watch where they all look out for each other because people do come into these neighborhoods looking to, you know, enact justice on these individuals. So it is um, seriously a dangerous place to enter. A lot of YouTubers recently have gone in here acting a fool walking around bothering people. And I don't really think they understand um, how close they can come to something unfortunate happening after all. These people don't have a lot to lose. They can't get a job. They can't get a license sometimes. They just, they can't get anything. And they have to live in specific neighborhoods. These are people that pretty much have nothing to lose. And if they go to jail, they uh, it's not going to be fun for them in jail. So definitely not cool. You can see that I'm speeding up. And that is because I finally got a ride. Now, I'm nervous. And I'm sure the person that's going to get the ride is also nervous. This is just a really bad neighborhood, so I don't know. My heart's racing. I don't know what I'm getting into, and I'm sure if the other person, if they have a legitimate place to go, they may feel the same way, so I think everybody is going to be nervous getting an Uber ride in this area, both the driver and the person getting in the car because of the area's reputation. So at this point, we have a passenger, and the passenger is a female and she is on the phone with what might be her husband or boyfriend the whole time i'm in here driving she's on the phone with somebody so she knows not to trust the driver and uh, this is a much nicer neighborhood here you can see nice houses and whatnot but again the passenger is on the phone with somebody she loves keeping tabs kind of on what's going on and that should just give you an idea of the type of neighborhood you're in when the passenger wants to be on the phone with somebody yes she might have been as nervous as i was heading there so yeah definitely sketchy despite the fact this looks like a really nice neighborhood you might want to go on that Florida Department of Law Enforcement website and just make sure there's nothing creepy going on too close to the area you're moving into because somebody coming from out of state could easily buy a house here and not know the type of neighborhood they're getting into. Shame, shame, shame. Now, St. Petersburg has what you call contrast neighborhoods. It means that one side of the road are millionaires and the other side of the road are people that are more marginalized. Square footage of the houses are smaller. And these are called contrast neighborhoods, which means that the poor people live right across from the rich people. And I'm not a fan of that type of cityscape, but St. Petersburg is notorious for being a contrast neighborhood city, which means that even though you live in a nice neighborhood, you're not too far away from something bad going on. Not my favorite type of cityscape. All right, so because of the nature of this area and to respect the passengers' privacy, I'm not even going to get too close to where we picked them up or we dropped them off, but you get the idea. The passenger was definitely somewhat nervous, or at least cautious. Perhaps with good reason. That ride only paid $6.50, and there was no tip. We picked up the next person not too far away at a business center right around here, and this ride only paid less than $7, and it took 14 minutes to go 7 miles. Seven miles, seven dollars. We're talking less than a dollar a mile again. That is not good pay. And once again, no tip on this one. Every once in a while, you get a customer that smells like they're doing something illegal. Talking about smells, just about every single person that I picked up was wearing so much perfume or cologne that I literally got asthma throughout the day. I'm still kind of short breathed. Not sure why, but in St. Petersburg, people like to really pack on the fragrances. If you live in St. Petersburg, tone it down a little bit. Here we are once again, 
on the interstate highway with some traffic for a delivery person job thingy here that will pay very little, yet it's very aggravating. So here we are again, bumper to bumper on a highway, and again, probably expecting no tip at all since it looks like it's somebody commuting. So definitely quite aggravating, but it gets worse. This isn't even the worst part. And again, in typical Pinellas County fashion, there's always somebody panhandling. So, well, I drop off that person, and immediately I picked up another person not that far away. I pulled into this parking spot here to figure out what the crap I was going to do, and I found somebody less than a minute away. Interestingly, I was in this area doing homeless camp videos not that long ago. Maybe two months ago, I was right in this neighborhood, in the same parking spot, doing a homeless camp video. Another thing that sucked about this trip to St. Petersburg is that I was in the same exact neighborhoods literally two months ago. So, nothing new to see here. So, now we're on the north side of St. Petersburg. This is somewhere between Pinellas Park, St. Petersburg, and Clearwater. So, we're way up north. And uh, the next person we're picking up is going to be at a dealership right here. And I was hoping... It would be a customer that bought a Maserati and they were going to give me a generous tip for driving them or something like that. But again, it turned out to be a worker commuting. So I had my hopes up, but then again, it is St. Petersburg and, well, it was just somebody else commuting. And then uh, it was kind of a long wait for them to finally wrap things up and come out. I don't even think I'm going to show you guys where I dropped this guy off because it didn't really matter. After dropping this guy off, I sat here at this intersection and wondered why nobody has stolen this guy's bicycle yet. It seems really easy to steal his bicycle, except for where's the wheel. If you could find the wheel, you could probably steal his bicycle. Not that I would steal a bicycle, but I'm sure in St. Petersburg somebody else would. So now I am starving, and I found a Cuban restaurant back in here next to a gas station. Now, I've never had this Cuban restaurant, and it's not in Tampa, it's in St. Petersburg, and it doesn't seem like it was a busy area, so I was hoping it would be good. It was decent. It was a pretty good Cuban sandwich. They use real Cuban bread. And let me tell you, there's a lot of places making Cuban sandwiches in the Tampa area, but you'll find few places that use actual real Cuban bread. You can smell the bread, because real Cuban bread is made with lard. Not that it's healthy, but that's the way it is if it's authentic. So we got a, a Cuban sandwich with a cafe con leche and, uh, and a guava pastry with tip came out to like $21. Took a nice little break here. And I literally waited, I kid you not, for a very long time before another customer came up. This guy noticed the camera and he didn't seem to like it. But it took a while to get another customer. Now that trip again was less than seven dollars and the person did not tip even worse the next trip brought me here to tampa and it was a 22 minute drive to go 13 miles i got 11 dollars to go 13 miles again less than a dollar a mile and there was a toll for a dollar 30 that i paid the good thing was that this trip finally got me out of St. Petersburg area and brought me to the Tampa area where I thought I was going to do well. Well, it turns out that despite the fact that there was an event in Tampa, nobody was catching Ubers. The reason being, well, casually earlier in the day, they had had a shooting in downtown Tampa at four in the afternoon, which left four people injured and thus left the city completely vacant as nobody wants to get shot or be part of the aftermath of something like that. Thus, the city of Tampa was completely empty. And I mean, the whole city was empty from one end to the other. These types of events happen. Cities clear out. People go home early from work. They get scared. They go pick up their kids from school. It just becomes a complete madhouse when something like that happens. And uh, I couldn't get a single ride for the rest of the day in Tampa. So finally, the last person, like I said, brings me all the way to Tampa. No tip at all. But there was a toll. What a waste of time. I don't even think after driving from Bradenton to St. Pete to Tampa and back, when you can calculate the tolls that I paid, my gas, I don't think I made a profit. The day came out to about $50, maybe $55, somewhere in that range, definitely way under $60, 
But when you calculate my gas on 15 miles per gallon, it would have been better to stay at home. In fact, I got one ride in Lakewood Ranch earlier in the day, and that ride in Lakewood Ranch was more profitable than all this driving through two large cities. So I would say St. Petersburg and the Tampa area in general, probably a horrible place to Uber. Every once in a while, I'll see a ride from Sarasota to the Tampa airport. Pays about $50. Now I know not to take those rides because, well, once you're there, there's nothing to catch back. Complete waste of time. I only started to get rings for pickups once I was back in Sarasota and Branton. Then my phone started blowing up, at which point I was so disappointed in Ubering for the day that I was completely done. Definitely, I would say never again on Ubering in St. Petersburg area.